I felt like I was a monster. He said, don't worry about it, you're swollen. Give it time to heal. It never healed. I was a typical Midwestern outdoorsy kid. Played softball, went camping, went boating, just lived outside. When we would travel a lot, my family would poke fun at me because I had a horrible snoring problem. Nobody wanted to share the room in the camper with me because they knew they were gonna be up all night listening to me snore like a trucker. So I decided to go see an ENT who suggested, well, why don't you just get a rhinoplasty? And I was like, well, wait, what? Is that an option? I can breathe and I can get rid of this gigantic triangle on my face. A few months after uh, the surgery, I felt a really hard, pea-sized bump on the top of my nose. The doctor informed me he would be willing to fix it, no charge, if I were to not go under anesthesia. It was just unbearable. I was literally shaking and crying, and he was getting very annoyed that I couldn't sit still and I couldn't handle the pain. Then when he was actually filing the bone, it just sounded and felt just terrifying. I told the surgeon, I can't do this anymore, stop. I don't care what it costs. I will pay for the anesthesia. I cannot do this. My name is Michelle. I feel like Edward Scissorhands operated on my face. I definitely have a more manly, non-feminine jaw. It's very square, very choppy. I have always had a double chin. I have been hiding my chin since a young child. <laughs> To hide my chin in photos, I've used ice cream cones, lollipops, my dog, anything. I was always self-conscious of that. So when I was 37, I went to a doctor to see what he could do. I found my surgeon online. I felt very comfortable with him, and he convinced me to do an implant. He also convinced me to have a liposuction. I wanted to look better, so I went ahead and had the procedure. When I was in surgery, I woke up on the table because I heard the doctor and the anesthesiologist, they were screaming at each other. And I asked the doctor, are we done? And he like touched my chin area and said, go back to sleep, and I did. I knocked out again. A week later, when he unbandaged me and revealed my face, it was a nightmare. My chin was huge, and I had incisions over here, and then the one from the implant, which is right here, and I had a scar going all the way down here. I felt like I was a monster. He said, don't worry about it, you're swollen. Give it time to heal. It never healed, and I just, had to learn to live with it. There's not like a return policy on your chin. <laughs> Being the owner of a hair salon, people look at me as the face of my hair salon. And this has affected me tremendously because I can't really focus on a lot of other things because I'm focusing on if somebody's looking at my chin and it's uncomfortable. I, I want to be glamorous, I want to be beautiful. As a teenager, I was really afraid of guys at that time. I was more into sports and stuff. And my behind, it was okay. I did have muscles there because I was actually using them a lot. You can put me in a pair of sweats or shorts and I'm totally comfortable. In 1995, I moved to Miami and I started working at a hotel and I worked there for almost 11 years. When I was hired there, we were told, if you don't fit into these shorts, you are not hired. A lot of the women there were from different countries where they already had their derriere in place because of genetics. And a lot of times I would look at them and I wanted what they had without all the hard work that goes along with exercising. I found my plastic surgeon through a family member. I was told that he did really good burn victims. So I figured if he could do a burn victim and make them look as good as they come out, then he would be pretty good at doing a behind. But I think my logic was way off. When I woke up from surgery, the implants were very high. They weren't symmetrical. A day later, I went back to the surgeon. He told me that the implants would eventually move, but the implant wasn't moving. Finally, the implant became encapsulated. For the second surgery, my surgeon used the same implant as the first time. I would like to see Dr. Debro and Dr. Nassif because I need the surgery mostly because of the pain, whether it be taken out or fixed, I need it done. What type of a doctor did that for you? He was a plastic surgeon, and he was pretty new. What did he do? Put implants in? He did, silicone implants. How long after your buttock augmentation did things start to change? Instantly. I had um, infection as soon as I came out of the hospital. How long did this process of infection last? I think almost two years before I completely healed. 
Wait, you had an infection for two years? Yes, I did. So did you contact the doctor who put it in and said, hey, I'm having this chronic long-term infection problem with my buttock implant? What did he say? He kept promising me the world, and it wasn't working out that way. Did he do an another procedure then? Yes, he did. He decided to take out the one implant, and he replaced it with the same implant. You know what we call that? Malpractice? That's called malpractice. That is so dangerous. She could have got MRSA. It could have killed her. So you don't have an infection anymore now? No. Are you having pain? I do have lots of pain. Does it affect your intimate life at all? Oh, yes, because I was afraid what they would see from behind. I'd rather be by myself than have to show that part of my body and have to explain it. I look like SpongeBob right now because my stomach protrudes a little bit from the muscles not being tightened up, and my liposuction's just all off, so I just kind of look like a square. My belly button looks like a it's an ugly mess with like a nasty, like huge scar around it. I feel chubby and I feel like a freak. After I had three kids, my stomach looked like somebody had blown up a balloon and just let all the air out. And it was just like this elastic, bubbly mess. And then my husband and I split up. Just getting back out there in the dating world, so I started thinking about a tummy tuck, just feel confident with myself. Because you always think there's younger girls, there's prettier girls, there's more in shape girls. I'm a mom, I have three kids, I work full time, I can't dedicate my life to the gym. I came out of surgery, they're like waking me up. They literally had me stand up like maybe 10 minutes after I woke it up. Just kicked like you 10, out. Yeah, they're like, okay, bye. First got a glimpse of my stomach about four days later, I had like pinched pleated type skin like if you said you were going to make an apple pie and then you stuck the crust on top and then you pinched the crust all the way around that's what my stomach looked like on the bottom remember i told you how i got MRSA MRSA is a bacterial infection infections happen which is not a big deal but when you go to your doctor and you say why do i have greenish yellowish yeah coming out really? of my belly yeah. uh -huh. and the doctor's like oh you're good you're good it'll fine. heal it's you're fine there's no infection there I started to see my stomach opening and I saw like some like yellowish, greenish discharge. So I made an appointment. I get there and he said, oh, it's fine. Holes happen. Skin opens up. We deal with it a lot. It's common. So I made an appointment with a, just a general practitioner and I went down and he did a, he took a sample of it and it turned out to be MRSA. We have a tummy tuck that went bad. Yeah, look at this. I think oh, this, this. That's MRSA. Right. This really significant redness and skin loss and tissue death. Well, you know, I just love the way you tissue death. Well, I mean, that's what it is, you know? MRSA is a very dangerous bacteria. It can lead to what's called a necrotizing fasciitis, which is basically flesh eating disease. It can spread throughout your body, cut off your limbs get into your eyes, make you blind, and kill you. Hola, Dr. Nassim, Dr. Dubrow, here is Christina. Hello. Hi. Thank you. A little bit nervous about coming in. Just the anxiety from the previous surgery and all the pain I went through and just everything kind of just got me a little freaked out. Obviously, you had a tummy tuck mm -hmm. and some liposuction, and it didn't yep. go well. No. Right. Not well at all. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, last June, I decided um, that I want to get a tummy tuck, so I went to the doctor. I went in, talked to him. We made the appointment. I went under. Everything went good with surgery. I came out and went home. After a couple days, I peeled the bandages off, and it just didn't look like the other tummy tucks I had seen. It got infected, didn't it? It did. It that, got infected. That was the main problem, right? So tell yeah, us about Yeah, I had a um, really bad infection. So that's among the worst bacterial infection you can get. That can be a flesh eater. Dr. Dubrow is telling me that. I'm just like floored. I had no idea that it could be that bad.